notes are about dividing polynomials. Let's go back to, I don't know when you learned this, elementary school at some point, maybe fourth grade, I don't know. Long division. Remember this? If we wanted to divide 296 by 3, you probably learned this algorithm. It might make sense to you, it might not, um, about why it works, but let's just make sure we remember how to do this before we do the harder ones. 296 divided by 3, you might have had that set up. And I know in different countries you might put um, the number, the uh, divisor, the dividend um, in different places, but I think the algorithm is basically the same. Um, I've, I have seen this done kind of like upside down, I know in, in different um, cultures it's done differently. Um, actually, it is important to know what these are called. The um, three, that would be called the divisor, and 296 is the dividend, what you're dividing into. Divisor is what you're dividing by. And you would ask yourself, okay, 3 does not go into 2, so we'd start with the 29. How many times does 3 go into 29? It goes in 9 times. 3 times 9 is 27. We would then subtract. 29 minus 27 is 2. You would bring down that 6. 3 goes into 26 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18. No, I'm sorry. Um, that was wrong. 3 goes into 26 um, uh, 8 times, not 6 times. 3 times 8 is 24. Uh, 26 minus 24 is 2. And we're done. We would call that our remainder. So we get 98 as our quotient. Okay. So we could write this, what we just did, in a couple of ways. 296 divided by 3 equals 98 with a remainder of 2. This might be how you wrote it in elementary school. You could also say that 296 divided by 3 is equal to 98 plus 2 thirds. You'd put the remainder over your divisor. Um, I could also uh, write this as just 98 and 2 thirds, but I want to leave the plus there to show what we're really doing. We're taking our quotient and adding our, ratio, our um, remainder over our divisor. So there's two ways of writing what we just did. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. Let's do this with polynomials. How about 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 7 divided by 2x plus 1. We can use the same long division algorithm with polynomials. Let's see what that might look like. 2x plus, um, you know what, let's actually change that to a 2x plus 6. That'll just make things a little bit nicer. Um, our divisor would still go out front. Dividend is now this whole long polynomial. 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 7. Same thing, start with the first term. How many times does 2x go into 2x cubed? It's a little harder to think about, but I think about it like this. 2x times what is 2x cubed? 2x cubed, And that would be x squared. 2x times x squared gives us 2x cubed. Now, same thing, we would multiply this x squared, this monomial, by the 2x plus 6, and we would get 2x cubed plus 6x squared. Notice I had to distribute that x squared to both terms in order to get the 2x cubed plus 6x squared. We can now subtract, just like we did before. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. It better be, that's why we picked the x squared to multiply by. Negative 4x squared minus 6x squared is negative 10x squared. Bring down the plus 8x. So far, it's the same. Same process. 2x times what is negative 10x squared? It might help to break it up. 2 times what is negative 10? That would be negative 5. And then the x times what is the x squared? And that's just an x. 2x times negative 5x is negative 10x squared. Now we're just going to multiply not the whole uh, thing that's on top here, just the, five, the negative 5x. We're going to multiply just that monomial by the 2x plus 6, and we'll get negative 10x squared minus 30x. That was the negative 5x times the positive 6 gave us the negative 30x. 
Again, we're going to subtract. Be very careful. 8x minus negative 30x is a positive 38x. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding. Negative 10x squared minus negative 10x squared is 0. Bring down the plus 7. Repeat. 2x times what is a negative, uh, no, it's positive 38x, and that would be a positive 19, just a 19. 19 times 2x is 38x. Now we can multiply and distribute. We get 38x plus, ooh, 19 times 6 is 114. We would now subtract 38x minus 38x is 0. 7 minus 114 is negative 107. We're done at this point because we can't, um, there's no term that I can, uh, there's no polynomial term really, um, that I can put next uh, to multiply by 2x to get negative 107 because there's no x next to the negative 107. Um, I know that there's nothing we can multiply 2x by to get that. So we're done. We can write our quotient in a couple of different ways, just like we did above. We can say that our quotient was x squared minus 5x plus 19 with a remainder of negative 107. Or we could say our quotient was x squared minus 5x plus 19 plus our remainder over our divisor. Notice the second thing, this last uh, expression here, that is not a polynomial expression. Because of our remainder, we now have a variable in the denominator. So that's not um, polynomial anymore, but it's still our quotient. Um, notice something interesting. We had a remainder. So would you say that 2x plus 6 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 7? No, because there's, there's a remainder. Let's just think about that with numbers for a second. Um, is 4 a factor of 32? Yeah, you might know just right off the bat that 4 is a factor of 32, but the reason it is is because there's no remainder when you divide 32 by 4. Yes, because 32 over 4 is 8 with no remainder. So having a remainder be 0 is another way of explaining why something is a factor of something else. And I know that 2x plus 6 is not a factor of our original cubic because our remainder was negative 107. So, let's see. That was just kind of our added thought, but to fully answer this question, um, well, I did the division right here. Here's our answer, and I can say that 2x plus 6 is not a factor of 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 7 because the remainder after dividing is not equal to 0. If the remainder was 0, I know that we would have a factor. So we can think division is really, really important because if we want to know factors of polynomials, if I want to know whether or not something is a factor, I can divide and then look at the remainder. Why do you think we care about factors of polynomials? Well, if we want to graph them, we would need to know their zeros. And I think factors are pretty important towards finding zeros as you saw in the previous notes. So factors are important because they tell us the zeros. Remainders of division problems are important because it tells us whether or not we were dividing by something that was a factor or not. So there you go. You can practice some long division.